All right, so this class, uh, we're going to talk about something called Hess's Law. Uh, Hess's Law is a strategy that enables us to calculate the enthalpy change of a chemical reaction uh, using its individual intermediate steps. All right, but first, let's consider this analogy here. So you have a group of construction workers, and you're basically building a brick wall, okay? And you build the wall high enough that you have to be on the second floor to continue to lay bricks. Now, to do that, you need to get the bricks from the ground to the second floor. And you have two ways of doing this. One, very simple, you carry bricks, go up the stairs to the second floor and hand the bricks over to the bricklayer. Okay, very simple. Or you can be an idiot and carry the bricks all the way up to the third floor, take the stairs down, and give the bricks to the brick layer. All right, both of these strategies will achieve the same goal. That is, the brick layer gets the bricks, okay? The change in the overall potential energy of the bricks is the same. Like the brick on the ground has no potential energy because it has no height from the ground. The uh, bricks on the second floor have a specific potential energy, but it doesn't really matter how you got to the second floor. As long as you're on the second floor, you're going to have the same potential energy. Does that make sense? So we really just care about the end goal. We don't care about how to get to the end goal. This is exactly opposite of that saying. Um, it is not the destination, but the trip that we take to get there. No, no, this is not about the trip. This is about the destination. I don't care how you got there, just get there. Okay, so chemical reactions work in the same way as that bricklaying example. If you want to talk about the enthalpy change of a reaction, well, you have to know that it is independent of the pathway and the number of intermediate steps into getting the final product. It doesn't matter how you go from the reactor to product. You can do this in one step, two steps, 20 steps. Doesn't matter. The net overall enthalpy change will be exactly the same. All right? And suggested by the uh, diagram, the energy diagram to the right, you can see that the, the example is nitrogen and oxygen combining to make nitrogen dioxide. You can do this one of two ways. You can just do it directly, or you can make nitrogen monoxide first, and then make nitrogen dioxide. And you, if you check out the number, if you want to make nitrogen monoxide, that's a plus 90 in enthalpy, very um, endothermic. And if you want to go from NO to NO2, well, that's exothermic, so you, you lose uh, 56 kilojoules, and you have a net gain of 34. Okay, so the two ways, the direct route, well, nitrogen gas plus oxygen gas, you have NO2 gas, enthalpy is plus 34 kilojoules per mole. The less direct route, you first make nitrogen monoxide, that gains 90 enthalpy. And then from nitrogen monoxide, you react with oxygen again to make nitrogen dioxide. This actually loses 56 enthalpy. So if you add them up and cancel, so just like a mathematical equation, you can cancel things on the left and right side of the arrow. Right, you make nitrogen monoxide in the first reaction, that's your product. But then immediately you consume that in the second reaction and you make NO2 as your final product. So they can, they can just cancel out the 2NO, cancel the 2NO, and you can add up the two equations. The nitrogen just drops through the bottom. O2 plus O2 is two O2s and you have two nitrogen dioxide. And you, of course, you do the same thing with the enthalpy. 90 plus negative 56 is positive 34 kilojoules per mole. So you can see that they're exactly the same. Uh, you can take multiple steps to get to the product. This shouldn't change the overall enthalpy. Okay, did I make myself clear? Doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there. All right, so this brings us to Hess's Law. 
Uh, the word definition of Hess's law states something like this. So the enthalpy change for the conversion of reactants to product is the same whether this occurs in one step or several steps. Okay, if you want to go to Japan for a vacation, you can take a direct flight or you can take a detour to the United States and then go to Mexico, then go to the South Pole, go to Australia, and then finally land in Japan. Well, you're going to you know, travel the same net distance. It's just that one trip costs more and wastes more time. But that doesn't matter. We just want the final result. So the value of delta H for any reaction can be written as the sum of all the intermediates. If you add up the enthalpies of all the intermediate steps you took to get to the final uh, stage, then you should get the same net enthalpy. So this is the mathematical representation of that. The delta H, the change in enthalpy of the target, is equal to sigma, that means the sum of all the individual enthalpies that you use in your steps. Okay, all you have to do is just add them up. Does that make sense? All right, so here's the formula again. And in order to use Hess's law, you have to follow and apply two different rules. The first rule is that if you decide to reverse a chemical reaction, you want to switch the reaction with the product, you can. All you have to do is switch the sign of delta H. If delta H is positive, if you reverse the reaction, that becomes negative and vice versa. You can also multiply the entire equation by a constant or you can divide by a constant. And if you do that, then you also have to do the same thing to delta H. If you decide to multiply everybody by two, sure, multiply delta H by two as well. Okay, so these two rules must be followed. Now, why are we talking about these rules and that equation? Well, example one should make it quite clear. So here's example one. Your job is to calculate the change in enthalpy delta H for this reaction, the combustion of sulfur. You have solid sulfur burn with oxygen, you have sulfur trioxide. That is your final product. And in order to get there, you need two steps. The first step is burn sulfur with oxygen to make sulfur dioxide. And then you take sulfur dioxide, you burn it with half oxygen to make sulfur trioxide. And these two steps are given to you. And you have delta H1 and delta H2, the respective changes in enthalpy of the two steps. So the question is, what is the change in enthalpy for the overall reaction given to you in the beginning? S plus 3 over 2 oxygen, you get SO3. All right, so what you do here is you have to manipulate your two equations, add them up so that it cancels out to exactly your net equation given to you in the question. Now you can do whatever you want. You can switch the reactant and product. You can multiply or divide by any number. So let's see what we can do here. This one is very simple. All you have to do is just nothing. Cancel the SO2s and you arrive at your final equation. Right? The SO2 appears on both sides, so you can simply cancel them. So now you can add them up. Sulfur drops. Oxygen plus half oxygen is 3 over 2 oxygen. The SO3 drops, so you have exactly what the question has. And of course, since you didn't do anything to the equation, you simply added them, you would add up the two enthalpies. So delta H1 plus delta H2, that is negative 397, uh, 395.7 kilojoules. All right, and that will be the answer to this question. What is delta H for that reaction? 395.7 negative. So you can only cross out SO2 when they're on opposite sides of the arrow? Exactly. You can only cross out if they're on opposite sides. If they're on the same side, you actually add them up. Like the oxygens, they're both on the left side of the arrow. So instead of crossing out, you have one plus a half, that's three over two. Does that make sense? It's just like math. Opposite side to cancel, same side you add. 
All right, so example two is a lot more complicated, and you can see that this one has more reactants and products. So, but the same thing, use Hess's law, find the enthalpy change of the incomplete combustion of methane to produce carbon monoxide and water. All right, so the two individual steps are given to you you need to manipulate the equations. You can flip the reactions and products, you can multiply or divide by any number and then add them up to cancel to get to the net equation. I'll give you some time to work on this and I'll take up the answers with you in around five to 10 minutes. Okay, so for questions like this, if you're ever stuck, and you're like, wait, how am I supposed to get to the net equation on top, right? What, what do I do first? Because there are so many possibilities. I don't know which one to choose. Well, here's my strategy. What you want to do is you want to look for a unique compound in your equations. So you're given two smaller equations. Look for the unique compound. That means it only appears once in one of the equations. And methane, CH4, is unique. Okay, methane appears in your final net equation, and it only appears once in all of your given equations. So that means that is the only source of methane, so you must use that methane to get to the final product to have the same number of methane. And the final product has two methanes. The equation only has one. So this tells you, you have no choice. You must multiply the first equation by two. Otherwise, there's no way to get two methane done because that's the only methane you have. You see how this works? So this gives you a way to go. You have to do this, multiply that by two and do nothing else with that equation. So once you do that, you just double all the coefficients and you double the enthalpy. So negative 890 becomes negative 1780, all right? And this also very conveniently gives you four waters because there are four waters in the final product. All right, so where do you go from here? Well, you can try to apply the same strategy to find something unique. You can notice that oxygen appears in the reactant in the final net equation. But the thing is, in your givens, you have two sources of oxygen. There's oxygen in both equations. So you're not so sure what to do with that. So, okay, let's look uh, further. Carbon monoxide, you have only carbon monoxide in the product in the final equation. And there's only one source of carbon monoxide. And that would be in the second equation in the reactant. Do you see that? That means you have to use that carbon monoxide and somehow put it in the product so that the product will have it. And the only way to do that is to flip the equation. And also there are no carbon dioxides in the final equation, but you have carbon dioxide in your given, so they must cancel somehow. So obviously you would then flip the second equation. You multiply by negative one so that the reactants and products are flipped. Now carbon monoxide would be on the product side. Carbon dioxide is on the reactant side. All right, and you do the same thing to the enthalpy. You multiply by negative one, so instead of negative 566, you now have positive 566. So have we done it? CO2 cancels with CO2 because you got two on each side, so that's gone. Oxygens can cancel. Four oxygen on the left, one oxygen on the right. They cancel to three oxygens on the left. And this is it. You can now add them up. You have two methanes three oxygens that produces two carbon monoxide and four waters. And then you add up your delta H after you manipulate both equations, of course. That adds up to negative 1,214 kilojoules. And that will be the enthalpy change for this reaction. Okay, I hope this is what you have. The trick is to find something unique 
because that will be the only source of that compound in your final equation, and you just manipulate that to make it look like the final equation. And it should all work out at the end. All of the unnecessary ones will magically cancel out if you do this correctly. If they don't cancel out, you probably made a mistake. It gets more complicated still. Okay, in this example three, you are given three equations. So ethene gas, C2H4, is the raw material for the synthesis of plastic polyethylene. Engineers designing a process to make ethene from ethane gas, C2H6, need to know the change in enthalpy of the desired reaction represented by the following balanced chemical equation. So the final net equation that you're looking for is C2H6 becomes C2H4 plus two hydrogen. So this is an elimination reaction. So the engineers have the following thermal chemical equations. You have one, two, three, three equations with three different enthalpies for each equation. And you're supposed to manipulate all of these. You can multiply and flip whatever and cancel them until you get the net equation. All right, I'll give you some time to work on this. Use the strategy I just told you, find something unique and make it look like the final product. All right, so I know this looks very long, but if you just follow that rule, it's actually very clear to know what to do. All right, so I'll give you around five minutes again. All right, so let's tackle this seemingly complicated question. All right, so here's what you have. You have the three equations. I would just write them out and line them up so that it's quite clear to see what to do next. Look at the net equation, that's your goal. You have a C2H6, that's the only reactant you have. So you need to cancel everything on the left side, except that. And if you look in your three equations, this only appears once. It appears in the first equation as the first reactant. So right off the bat, you know that you do nothing to the first equation, because if you just do anything, you will move it from its desired position, which is exactly where it is already, change nothing for the first equation, okay? Because you need the C2H6 exactly where it is. All right, so what to do with the other ones? Well, if you look at the net equation again, C2H4 occurs in the products. And in your three givens, you only have one instance of, two, of C2H4. And this is found in the second equation as the first reactant. Wait, it's a reactant. We need that to be in the products. So now this tells you that you must flip the second equation. That's the only way to get C2H4 to be in the product. That's the only way you can find C2H4. Okay? And it has one mole. The products should have one mole, so you don't need to multiply anything. Um, all you have to do is flip. Okay, does that make sense? Finally, the hydrogen. There should be hydrogen in the product. The third equation is the only place where you can get hydrogen. All right, but there's two hydrogens. And there's only one hydrogen in the product. So not only do you have to flip the third equation, you must also divide by two. So you flip and divide by two, and that's what you end up with. You, of course, do the exact same thing you did to the equation to their respective enthalpies. So the first enthalpy, no change, still negative 1,559. The second enthalpy, well, you flip the equation, you flip the sign, so now it's positive, 1,411. And the last enthalpy, you have to flip the sign and divide by two, so now it's positive 286. So let's start canceling. Carbon dioxide can cancel. There's two CO2s on each side. Okay, that's gone. What else can cancel? Well, the waters. There's three waters on the right side, two plus one on the left side, so that adds up to three, so they cancel. Finally, oxygen. You got 3.5 on the left side, three and a half on the uh, right side. That is exactly the same, so they can cancel. So the only things left would be C2H6. That's the only reaction on the left side. Products are C2H4 plus hydrogen. And so, this is correct. That's exactly the same as your desired net equation. So now you add up the manipulated enthalpies, and that adds up to positive 138 kilojoules. 
And that will be the final answer. That's the net enthalpy of the final net equation. All right, so that's it, guys. This is a lesson here, Hess's Law. How to apply Hess's Law, you add up the individual steps to get the overall net um, change in enthalpy. This lesson is not supposed to be complicated, but you can see that this is very, very annoying to do. Especially when you have to write out three equations, flip, do the math, and you can easily make a mistake in your calculations and you get the wrong answer. And many people have done that. So be very careful. You just have to calm down, take it slowly, um, just get to the final answer uh, carefully. Okay, you, should, you guys should be good. So any questions? All right, cool. I'm going to stop the recording.